How's it going guys? My name is Jay Fogg and welcome back to episode number four of my Football Manager 2020 journey here with Leeds United and today I'm starting things off with the profile of Matthias Bogus because I kind of mentioned it in the last episode because his current ability apparently was four star, it has dropped back down to three star, as you can see there it, it, it peaked, <laughs> it went up and then it came straight back down but I had, I had a little bit more of a look at him and he really, really is starting to develop really, really nicely and he is hopefully going to go on and become an absolute superstar and he did actually make his debut for the Polish national team and scored his first goal in his second game, so not too shabby. As you can see, he's now started four games for me in the league, made three substitute appearances. He's not actually been fantastic in the league, just a 6.77 average rating but you can see in the Carabao Cup which is really kind of where he was coming into his own 8.25 average rating in the four games that he has played and yeah I'm very very hopeful about him as long as these kind of attributes still continue to grow uh, he should turn into a fantastic player if we just have a little look at his coach report a lot of green consistent performer a decent personality potential to be a Premier League central midfielder yeah, improved considerably. He can play both central midfield and attacking midfield very, very well. Not that we actually use attacking midfielders at the moment. But yeah, he should go on to hopefully be a fantastic player and will probably be a mainstay in the side for the remainder of the season. But anyway, let's uh, let's quickly run through how the, how the games off camera have gone. So starting things off... We uh, first played QPR at home and things didn't get off to the greatest start. Asai Samuel, I mean, I'm not sure what <laughs> Casilla was doing there. A uh, horrendous attempt at a save. He didn't even try. But in the 63rd minute, we did uh, get an equaliser. Held Costa, plays it back to Douglas. Nice little outside of the boot shot into the bottom right-hand corner. And that left us out one all until the 91st minute a long ball over the top from Jordan Stevens to substitute through to Roberts initial shot was blocked but it fell kindly to him and he gave us a 2-1 lead and then straight away after that Ailing burst forward and he pulls the ball back to click who hits it first time another fantastic goal but that left us with a nice 3-1 victory as you can see here uh, a very very dominant performance and uh, Tyler Roberts came off the bench in the 78th minute to score a goal so I was very very pleased because well we have had some problems with our strikers as of late and hopefully Tyler Roberts is going to go on and potentially be the solution to that problem so next up we had Blackburn at home and after his um, after coming on and grabbing the what was essentially the winner I rewarded Tyler Roberts with a start and well <laughs> he got his goal very fortunate circumstances but we will take it so that got us off to a nice 1-0 lead but a header across from a corner was the equaliser. And then this, I do not know what Ben White was doing. Nice and simple. Well, just massive touch. <sighs> Feeds it to Armstrong. It was a nice, easy one-on-one. -on -one. But then we got a penalty just after half-time. And then click, put it away. And that is how the game finished. Once again, a very dominant performance. But just in front of goal, we did struggle. Um, story of my life at the moment. But yeah, at least Tyler Roberts albeit an incredibly lucky one, did get himself a goal and um, yeah, rewarded, um, repaid my faith in him with the start. So that is what we absolutely love to see. Next up, Luton away. And for the first goal, a lazy pass back from the Luton fullback. Roberts nips in and what a finish that is to uh, continue on with his fantastic goal scoring form, making it three in a row. But then in the 84th minute, I mean, just look at this. The right back with a sloppy pass. He made up for it with that. And what a strike. And all hope was lost. But then late on, in the going into injury time, the ball falls to Mateus Click. One touch and what a finish that is. Another great goal from Click outside the box. And we come away with a 2-1 victory. And I do actually want to show you this Click goal in 2D because, well, obviously I'll do my games in 2D. But the curve on this ball, you couldn't really appreciate it in 3D. But look at this. Just wait for it. Bang, that has curled an absolute mile. What a finish from Click. And yeah, another 2-1 victory, another dominant performance and very, very happy. Well, not too happy that we had to leave it until the 92nd minute to grab ourselves the winner. But I'll take it every single day of the week. And after that, running away, 0-0. Not much to say about it. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. And then in the final game of uh, the games I played off camera, it was at home to Middlesbrough, a team that had been doing really, really well. Started off, we went behind Ravel Morrison with a great goal from outside the box. And then, well, we hit back. And, well, just look at this great attempt from Douglas. It's bouncing around on the line. Danny Ayala, he's sick of it. He, he's not happy. He just boots it into his own net. <laughs> and then just before half-time, Tyler Roberts once again gets himself on the score sheet, uh, redirecting Costa's goal-bound header. And then Harrison, with a fantastic ball, held a Costa to give us the 3-1 lead. That was unbelievable ball, unbelievable finish. And moving on into the 85th minute, the corner was cleared. Phillips picks it up. Great ball. And Harrison with a little deft touch into the bottom corner. Gives us the 4-1 lead. And Borough did hit back. But it was too little too late for them, unfortunately. Nice header from George Friend at the back post. But the game did indeed finish 4-2. And that was that. We even missed a, missed a penalty in there. But once again, it's just the story of this save. Absolutely dominant. So, yeah, not a bad little run of games in between episodes. You can see there, three wins, two draws. Uh, disappointing, to be fair, to, to uh, not get the victories against Blackburn and Reading, two teams that we are definitely stronger than. But in terms of the league table, we are currently sat in third place. All the games today have actually been played, which I didn't actually realise. As you can see, Brentford and Fulham still in the top two with 48 and 47 points respectively, but I believe that that means that Fulham, yep, Fulham did in fact lose 2-1 away at Bristol City, and then just to confirm, yeah, Brentford beat Sheffield Wednesday 3-2 away from home. So for today's episode, I will be playing the games against Huddersfield away and Hull City at home. Obviously, Hull City, another team that are playing above expectations by a long, long way. Currently sat just two points behind us. But Huddersfield, who we're playing today, sat all the way down in 19th. And so, yeah, hopefully we will continue on our decent form and get another win here, close that gap on the top two. And it's starting to turn into a little bit of a free horse race. But West Brom are making a little bit of a comeback. They did have a slow start. I'll just have a look at their schedule, actually. I think, yeah, they've won... Won four on the bounce now in the league and just sit four points behind us. But in terms of the team selection for today, we do have a uh, slight matter of click is carrying a little bit of an injury. So I will put Shackleton in that box to box midfield role, put Bogus on the bench. Uh, Bogus on the bench, Bogus to start, bring McCalmont onto the bench. Who, he's, he's been out of favour a little bit recently, has McCalmont, uh, just because his performance is, he's been doing okay, but I wanted to give. Bogus a little more of a go in the league and uh, well Shackleton has been playing well when he's been called upon and also Click has been scoring goals left right and centre for us so he's been a little bit up and down but mostly positive performances from him I'm also going to put uh, Leaf Davis on the bench because Barry Douglas does get absolutely shattered uh, a lot of the time and yeah I think that is going to be the lineup that I'm going to go with today so it's Kassir in goal, White and Cooper at centre back, Phillips just in front of them, Dallas and Douglas Douglas at wing back, Bogus and Shackleton in the middle, Harrison on the left, Costa on the right, and Tyler Roberts, the man of the moment, up top. So hopefully, I said another win coming in today. Huddersfield, not a great side, just like real life, and I am actually going to still watch the games in 2 D. although I might do a few games in 3D so if that is something that you are interested in let me know in the comments section down below or just let me know whether you prefer uh, 2D or 3D I personally prefer 2D partly because it's just what I'm used to because I've played this game for so long and I've had rubbish laptops in the past which 2D is the only real viable option and I do like to see how the team kind of keep their shape and how they work the ball around I think 2D does give you the best kind of view of that but anyway Pick up where you left off at last time, please, fellas. Especially you, Tyler Roberts. Pick up where you've... Well, just pick up with what you've been doing so far for us. Not bothered about the interview. i just switch this over to 2D. Let's see how we start off this game. Obviously, if we win today, that puts us five points ahead of Hull. And then, obviously, playing them in the next game, if we can win again, oh, if we can beat them as well, then that would leave us actually eight points clear of Hull and make a massive, massive gap getting towards that halfway point in the season. But early on, it's actually Huddersfield that have had the uh, 
slightly more possession, but we're clawing it back. But it's been a pretty even game so far. Probably a fairly cagey affair based off the current stats. A lot of fouls coming in from Huddersfield, unsurprisingly. Right, so not long left in the first half. Going to get a little bit shouty, shouty. Demand a little bit more from them. See if we can force a little highlight before half time. No. Okay, well, I'm not happy with how that's gone. So pick yourselves up and uh, let's get back on it for this second half. Jack Harrison is not having a great game, but we've actually got a highlight as Cooper brings the ball forward. He's looking for a run, but no one's really moving. Bogus is on it now, the man of the moment. Harrison... Can he find Roberts in the middle? The ball goes nowhere. But Roberts, oh, once again, Tyler Roberts. Oh, what a player. He started off the season injured, so he had to wait. Had to wait quite a while, really, to kind of get his chance. But he's got that chance, and he's grabbed it with both hands. And a real poacher's effort. Header forward from Bogus and Roberts, just outside the six-yard box. Heads it in at the near post to give us the 1-0 lead after 50 minutes. As you can see now, that puts us on 45 points. Five points clear of fourth place and just two points behind Fulham. As the corner comes in, it's a poor corner. It goes straight to the Huddersfield keeper. And he kicks it long and Grant is just completely ignored by Dallas. We do kind of clear it, but only far... No, never mind. Casilla has got the ball now. A dreadful ball forward from Huddersfield. He now plays it short to Phillips. And hopefully we can look to build something here as it's switched out quite nicely to Costa, actually. And he's taking it forward inside to Shackleton through to Harrison. He's one-on-one -on -one and he sneaks it in at the near post. Jack Harrison... I mentioned earlier on how he was having a poor game, but he's turned it around now. His eighth goal of the season, I think that actually makes him the top goal scorer for us. I think he was at level with Click, but Harrison now with that eighth goal of the season. Oh, poor goalkeeping, he'll be disappointed to have let that one in. But a 2-0 lead, very, very happy with that. And some decent performances, but another highlight here. Throw in in a dangerous position, but Harrison, great work in the defensive areas. Wins the ball back as Phillips pings it out to uh, Costa. And now it's Dallas bringing it forward. Plays it forward to Roberts. Looks for Costa to Dallas. Back to Roberts, and he's offside. Uh, he puts it in, but he's just offside. As we'll see here from this little uh, 3D replay. Oh, he's not far off, to be fair to him. And, well, it remains 2-0. Right, getting towards the 70th minute now. I'm going to look at making a couple of changes. Bogus is struggling a little bit. So I'm going to take him off. Bring on McCalmont. And I did mention how Barry Douglas has been getting tired. So I'll put Leif Davis on the bench. But Barry Douglas is absolutely fine. So I'm going to bring on my boy, Jordan Stevens on the right. For these last 20 minutes, let's see what he can do. As there is another highlight here, Douglas stays for him. Roberts plays it back to him. It's back to Roberts on this left hand side. Back to Douglas. Is it going back to Roberts again? No. McCalmont now. <laughs> he hits the post. What a finish that would have been. But unfortunately, it's just kept out by the post. So we're now getting into the last 10 minutes of the game. I'm not going to make any changes because there is no need to at the moment, really. There's another highlight here. Dallas is on it. Takes it past one. Takes it past two and hits it wide. Now throwing it to Huddersfield. Emile Smith row whips it in. And there is no one there. An easy claim for Cassia. As he kicks it forward to Harrison. Back inside to McCalmon, who looks over the top to Roberts, but it's a poor ball. And it's um, easily defended by Huddersfield coming forward, but another poor ball and <laughs> risky ball from Phillips. And <laughs> That was, uh, <laughs> well, I suppose you live by the sword, you die by the sword. But fortunately, we got away with a few dodgy passes there. Shackleton to Dallas, and Dallas from right wing back puts it into the bottom corner. And with that, I am going to make the last change. I'm actually going to give Leif Davis a little bit of a run out. Because, again, he's another player who's kind of, he's coming on quite nicely a little bit. You can see he's now considered a two and a half star um, player. Let's see, currently operating at... Uh, league one level he is decent now as a left wing back so yeah i've been training him up in that role so give him a few minutes in the league to learn the position just a little bit more because obviously the more that he actually plays there the better he will become at playing the position and there is actually a highlight straight from kickoff but i think it's probably because i was making changes yeah nice easy save for Casilla, but it does actually continue as white plays it forward to stevens who looks for roberts lose out in the air but mccalmont's there and the ball just kind of bouncing around here, there and everywhere. 
We just need to put our foot down on it and some wonderful little passes there. Some lovely, lovely triangles. As Douglas beats his man, puts the ball in. Stevens at the back post, heads it over the bar. Very, very little left in this game. Into injury time now, four minutes. As there is a free kick, Cooper plays it forward to Leif Davis. And McCalmont looks for Roberts, but again, it's a poor pass. Some of these, um, some of these passes forward have not been great. As now, Marie, how have you got that much space? A great recovery from Cooper. Fantastic tackle. Dallas boots it forward. And that is going to be that 3-0 win away at Huddersfield. Another derby. And, well, very, very happy. Look at that. Some unbelievable ratings all round. Jamie Shackleton with an 8.9 after he uh, was demanding a new contract and getting upset because I won't give him one. I did decide. I, I buckled. I gave him one. 8.5k a week. But I've got him tied down now until 2023, and he is another player who's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, currently operating at championship level and potentially be a Premier League midfielder in the future. And hopefully will become a fantastic player for us. But yeah, very, very happy with that result. Uh, just tell them that I'm very happy with the result and the way you played. And I will see you next in a, well, in a few minutes for me, in about two seconds for you for the whole City game. Oh. I didn't realise Sam Allardyce was the uh, Huddersfield manager. <laughs> That's, uh, I didn't even realise that. Is it Danny Cowley? Is he the manager currently at Huddersfield? Must have been Sachs. Let's see. History. Where do I look at it? Land managers. There we are. Oh, yeah. Danny Cowley got sacked in September. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Eight games lost. One draw. Bloody hell. And Big Sam coming free, free, free. <laughs> Right, so here we are for the second game of the episode, Hull City at home. And I think I'm going to go completely unchanged for the lineup because we were so good in that last game. Although I will make a couple of slight tweaks. Uh, I'm actually going to bring Alioski onto the bench because Leif Davis has just played 90 minutes for the 23. So he's relatively fit, but um, yeah, I don't want to risk him too much. I'm also going to get... What am I going to do? I'm also going to get Click on the bench in place of Stevens. So I've got a couple of wingers that can play already. And so, yeah, I thought I might as well take him off the bench because he's not done a huge amount for me so far as Jordan Stevens, unfortunately. I absolutely love him as well. So he better start performing for me. And he's starting to uh, feel that he deserves a new contract. Well, you know what, Jordan? I don't. I disagree. But yeah, so. In terms of the starting lineup, it's going to be completely unchanged. So, Casilla, White, Cooper, Dallas, Phillips, Douglas, Shackleton, Bogus, Harrison, Costa, and Roberts. And let's let's just jump straight into it. Like I said, a huge, huge chance to develop a massive gap here of eight points with ourselves and fourth place. Just just as we are starting to approach the halfway point of the season. Um, where is pick up where we left off? Carry on with how he did in the last match. Good stuff. Everyone seems pretty, pretty happy as a leading scorer. Oh, I didn't even realise where the leading scorer is in the championship, but it's not surprising because we do play pretty attacking brand of football. Yeah, go with that. Um, the very, very basic one. You're fifth in. We're only fifth in the form table. I want to keep it going. There we go. The game has now kicked off. Brentford not actually playing, so a chance for us to actually leapfrog Brentford. Um, potentially into first place if Fulham do not get the victory before they play their game, I'm assuming either later on today or tomorrow. But so far, 20 minutes in, very little has happened. Uh, I was about to demand more as White is actually off the pitch here with an injury, which is not too great for us if Hull come on the attack now. De De Weiss, De Weiss, device? I don't know, Camille forward to Scott. Looking for Dar, oh dear, oh dear, Barlow in the middle. Puts Hull City 1 0 up. Not having White on the pitch for the duration of that attack definitely was not ideal. Oh dear, oh dear. That is not how we wanted to get ourselves, or not how we wanted to start off this game. As you can see that ball into the middle. A nice easy finish for him for about two yards out. And well, that is not good. Hopefully we can hit back quickly as there is another highlight not too long after the goal. Stewart plays it forward to Kane on loan from Liverpool. Over the top to the goal scorer, Ballow. Needs someone to close him down as he plays it back to Kane. He is pressure but Lehigh now on the ball. Douglas makes a tackle but no further than Madison who crosses it into the back post. But now Helder Costa is mm -hmm. on it as he's racing forward. Can he beat his man and get a nice ball into the box? 
I don't know what happened. Shackleton in the middle. What a finish, Jamie Shackleton. Oh, unbelievable stuff as Douglas is down inside our box. And that is not what we like to see. But let's have a look at this goal in glorious 3D. Held Costa left his man for dead with a slight tackle. Ball in Jamie Shackleton on the volley into the top corner and what a way to, to reply after going one down early on but a couple of injuries in the back line is not what we like to see and I might have to look at changing at least changing one or maybe if not both of them out fairly soon as the injured man Barry Douglas free kick comes to nothing but we've still got the ball Phillips on it now to Dallas going to look forward to Roberts and well, well with how he's been playing in the last few games you'd expect him to put that one away but there is going to be one final highlight just before half time and Scott has actually just sived down Dallas and it's a straight red card and well we're going to be playing at the second half against 10 men James Scott a winger striker attacking midfielder of some sort is the man that has gone off and well that is what we like to see. Just going to tell them that I'm pretty disappointed with how things are going. And I am actually going to take off Barry Douglas because uh, for Alioski because he is quite susceptible to injuries. So there's no point risking him and making it worse. Ben White, I am leaving out there for now. At... Right, brilliant. That's what I wanted, wasn't it? Oh, God. Um, so I've taken off Alioski to make sure that Barry Douglas doesn't get himself any <laughs> ah, any worse of an injury and we're going to have to switch things up a little bit here I'm going to put Ali off. I'm going to have to put Dallas on the left bring Berardi onto the right and I'm actually going to switch to my slightly more defensive format because Berardi and Dallas are much more comfortable as just standard right back and left back rather than wing backs so that is not ideal. Just need to hope that Ben White now doesn't go on and get injured. But fortunately, we're only playing against 10 men as Phillips takes a free kick. And oof, I was not far off. I'm not sure what the keeper was doing there. Nice little, oh, nice little bit of goal line technology. Not that we can really see it. Um, yeah, very close to going over the line. But we do need to go on and get ourselves a winner here. And Tyler Roberts is not having the, game, the best game of his career. So I think I'm actually going to take off Tyler Roberts and bring on August Stan for these last 20 minutes. And hopefully we can find a way through this whole City defence as Phillips got a free kick on the edge of the box into Cooper. Heads it over the bar. I'm going to give a little shout. Get creative as we really, really do need to take advantage of the fact that we're playing against a very weakened Hull side. With that, obviously, that man at disadvantage as Dallas whips it in. Comes off in Berardi out on the right hand side. Looks to beat his man, but he gets tackled. And Hull now on the counter attack. Need a foot in here, need to get the ball off him. He's, Phillips is just kind of jockeying him, nothing, and he smashes it into the side netting, thankfully for us. But heading into the last five minutes of the game, we are struggling to make a breakthrough here into injury time. So it's going to be one final highlight. And you'd imagine as Irvine tackles. Um, bogus but the ball is back Dallas into Shackleton back to Dallas is he going to look to do it all on his own oh, he get tackled by everybody but he wins it back Phillips Shackleton is he going to hit it from the edge of the box no he's not plays it out to Berardi who beats his man into the middle bogus come on we started off the episode talking about bogus and how much he's coming along and basically saying now oh, we need to see more from him in the league and he may well have just found the winning goal here We'll watch it in 3D. Berardi beats his man, swings it in, bogus. And Long did get a hand to his header from the about the penalty spot. But it was not enough to keep it out as we take a one-goal lead. Time ticks away and that is going to be full-time. Very good performance all round. Would have liked a couple more goals. And let's just hope that the injuries suffered aren't too serious. Uh, just say it was a good win. Just leave it at that. Yeah, good way to finish off the episode. So let's. Oh dear. Oh dear. Three players injured. What is the damage going to be? Okay, hamstring strain for Alioski. Not too much of a problem. Barry Douglas, tight calf, one to three days. And Ben White, tight calf, one to two days. Ah. Oh. And that actually makes it 10 games unbeaten for us in the leagues. So and not too shabby. I didn't actually see how Fulham did. 
in the uh, in oh, Fulham lost to Preston. So does that mean we? Oh, we're currently sat in first place. Bloody hell! I didn't even realise. Brentford, they're playing. Oh, then they don't play until Wednesday. Oh, today is Wednesday. So let's see. Let's just skip forward and let's find out how they get on in at this game in the evening. Right, Brentford at home to Cardiff. Let's see. That's not what I want to see. Brentford beat Cardiff 2-0. So Brentford do get back on top of the league. But we are now sat in second place after 21 games. Nicely in the automatic spots. Just one point ahead of Fulham. But the big one, eight points clear of Hull City. And we're also within the playoffs by a whole 12 points. So yeah, like I said, it really is starting to become a free horse race between ourselves, Brentford and Fulham. But anyway... So for the next episode, there is actually it's actually going to be coming at you very, very quickly because we do have Fulham away in the league and I want to focus on that and also I can't not do the quarter-final against Sheffield United. I think that's going to be a tough game for us. I'm not expecting much from it. They're currently sat 12th in the Premier League, uh, 19 points from 16 games. Although we did be... Who was it that we beat? Villa, oh, Villa assigned 16th. But yeah, so I'm just going to play the Cardiff game off camera and then we'll be back for Sheffield United and Fulham. And one thing I didn't mention, we actually did draw Leicester in the third round of the FA Cup. So that'll be an interesting one. Will be a tough game. Uh, I probably won't show that in an episode, but I'll kind of I'll discuss that more in the next episode. But anyway, that is where I'm going to finish off today's episode. As always, I hope you have enjoyed. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the, the episode, please do be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new around here, and I'll catch you in the next episode.